Maybe Mr. Hessian, I could ask you look, to furnish whatever statistics you have and data yeah. on this, and the committee will take a further look at it, and we may call you in separately and the team separately to go through this specific issue again, because it, it's, it is an issue, and in fact, it was the one issue that I flagged up uh, in reviewing the documentation was this issue as well. Like, it seems to be a bizarrely low uh, threshold. Now, I take on board what you're t saying in relation to the alteration in relation to the calculation of maintenance from this point forward. But I suppose the other question I have, and wearing your head uh, hat as Assistant Secretary, and you may not be able to give me an answer today, so that's, that's okay, but you might come back. Is this figure used, or a similar figure used, in terms of disregards in any other aspect of social welfare, or in any other aspect of the calculation of the one for parent family payment because while it is no longer going to be hopefully an issue here or, or will be a relatively small issue here, is this figure or similar figures used in other calculations in social welfare? Because the reality is if this hasn't been addressed in uh, three decades and housing costs have skyrocketed since, like this is putting undue hardship uh, on families and needs to be radically uh, reformed very urgently in the forthcoming budget. So you might come back to us on that. Secondly, what is very clear from the evidence that we've heard today is that there is now an urgent need for clarification in terms of, of maintenance agreements where there is an agreement in place, where there is a payment being made uh, for clarity in terms of what is spousal maintenance and what is uh, child maintenance. So one of the recommendations I think this committee should now consider on foot of this is that the minister should engage or seek a tender for, from the family mediation service uh, to actually uh, assist uh, parents in receipt of this payment in having that clarified for them. I think it would make things easier from an administration point, uh, from the department's point of view. Uh, it would facilitate revenue in terms of, of the revenue aspect of this, uh, but it would also assist uh, one parent and families in having clarity. So I would suggest that the department would seek a tender from the family mediated Asian service to perform this service specifically for these cohort uh, of people so that we have clarity for everyone's uh, benefit in relation to it. Just the final question that I have uh, then is, um, and I note again the point that Deputy O'Queeve made in terms of the saving to the state, uh, and I think, you know, many people who argue that different payments should be means tested, including child benefit is the one that comes to, to mind quite regularly, should take note of the, the, the cost and savings involved here, because this is a, a, a real issue. But I want to turn to point four in your uh, submission, which is the cost to the exchequer. And that is the potential cost to the state here in relation to this is 10.1 million per annum due to the potential inflow of new customers and the potential increase in payments for existing customers. However, included in that calculation, there is no consideration given that there is now an additional potential, uh, additional potential incentive there for one parent and families hopefully to take up additional part-time uh, employment which would actually reduce the liability on the state and would actually increase the amount of PRSI uh, taken in. And that isn't included in your calculation here uh, because it will be a factor. How big a factor it will be, I don't know, but it should be acknowledged that there, it is going to hopefully help some one parent and families break out of that cycle uh, of poverty uh, as well. Just the other aspect and related to that is the 165 euro exemption that is there for a one parent family uh, recipient to take up uh, employment and then the clawback of 50% uh, after that. And I think Deputy O'Queeve has articulated it well 
that you know the wealthiest people in this country pay tax at 40%, but yet we're asking uh, one parent family recipients to pay a tax at 50% uh, in relation uh, to their income, and it's on gross income, so it's ta potentially taxable uh, as well. And you know that 165 euro threshold hasn't been increased in a number of years. Uh, the reality is that the um, minimum wage, the national minimum wage, has increased uh, since that. Um, and you might just clarify for the committee when it was increased last uh, and what has been the change in the, uh, the national minimum wage since then. And again, look, you may not have those figures to hand, but you might furnish them to the committee afterwards because I think this is also an aspect that should be considered uh, in the context of the, the budget discussions because I think this committee uh, is very, very conscious of the need to try and ensure that we can break that cycle of poverty for uh, one parent families, both in terms of, of the current generation but also the generation to come. And there's also an issue of if we can help uh, these uh, parents, and it's usually women, to get back into the workforce, even if it's only one or two hours a week. It's not just the income aspect of this, but there is a huge psychological boost in terms of confidence uh, for those parents getting back into the workforce, which not only benefits them, but benefits that whole family and has knock-on intergenerational impacts as well. And we need to, particularly now in an economy where we have full employment, where hopefully there are more opportunities to get that flexible uh, work. And with the delivery of broadband to every home in Ireland, there is again other opportunities for flexible employment. And we need to ensure that one parent and families are in a position to capitalise uh, on that for the intergenerational benefits, as well as the esteem benefits, as well as the financial benefits. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. So you raised a number of points there, so I'll, I'll go through my notes. If I've missed anything, please, please, do, please do remind me. Um, on your question about the housing disregard, does that apply elsewhere? It does apply across the system, but it only applies in respect of maintenance. So it's only an offset against maintenance. So it's not an offset against employment income. Uh, so that's where the 165, you, you, so if, if a lone parent has uh, income for maintenance, they can apply the housing disregard. If they also are working, the 165 will be offset. Uh, I don't know when that was last changed. I think it's there for quite some time, the 165. Although we do, and we have in recent budgets, adjusted the working family payment, half of the working family, working family payment has about 45,000 people on it, about half of those are lone parents. So the working family payment threshold is the one that tends to move uh, in line with changes in the national minimum wage. As Some of the thresholds have changed, but we're not going to go into that debate today because we've had that before, but yeah. I take the point you're making, yeah. Yeah, and uh, as well, government, uh, the current position is the government's working towards a living wage, so there's, there's a lot of different uh, dynamics in there. Um, the, uh, wouldn't you say we have separately, and I know I was here before talking about the, the straw man on uh, pay related benefit. There is a proposal in there for um, that working family payment model to be applied more generally, not in one parent, not in loan parent payments. Just to clarify that, but just just to say that that sort of threshold approach gives a lot more flexibility because you're basically you find at the threshold for your family composition, and then you get sixty percent of the difference. So it's it's just a bit more, um, uh, you know consistent with and, and easy, more flexible with someone who's combining work and work and welfare. On the employment, yeah, we completely agree with you in terms of the um, uh, the, the employment outcomes and like to some extent, like if you look at the, the silk figures or the international figures, like Ireland is much more reliant on income transfers to address poverty than other countries. You know, we the social welfare system does a lot of the heavy lifting in terms of bridging the gap between market inequality and actually income inequality. Um, the employment participation is part of that. Services, other things are part of that as well. We have a pilot project at the moment which we're doing uh, in the northeast of the country and it's a partnership with one family. It's European funded. There's also, it's been also been done uh, in Finland and Greece, is that right? Yeah. Um, 
So what we're trying to look at is what works for lone parents. So in other words, you know, obviously as a, as a department, our, our blind spot is, is structuring systems around what we can administer, what works, and it's really to try and say, well, what works from the lone parent's point of view. So we're working through that. Um, we've had good engagement, with great cooperation from one family. Uh, so that'll be an interesting outcome. And because it's been done in three different countries, there's a chance for us to sort of share homework and, and see how that works out. So You might first the committee with a, just a note outlining that scheme, because yeah. I know the members will be very interested uh, in it. Yeah, we have a note here, so we'll, we'll share that. So what we'll do is we'll pick up the various different um, uh, points and we'll, we'll, we'll supply a, a prompt note back, back to the committee. Um, so, yeah, just on your point you, you were making about the 10 million, that sort of links back to the point I was saying that the the, um, the point about PRSI participation, et cetera, that probably is more germane to the, uh, the, the income disregard rather than the maintenance disregard there. But I, I know the point you're making, that these, these things are, tend to be costed in terms of... Uh, the sort of first order effects, but there are second order effects uh, that, that come through, uh, and we certainly acknowledge that. Thanks. Uh